Yes, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to Country Focus Turkey panel. Uh, today we are gathered here to inform you about entrepreneurship and investment scene in Turkey uh, throughout our discussions. Uh, before we begin our panel, I would like to introduce myself and Galta Business Angels a little bit. Um, I am Ayşe Inal, I am the General Secretary of Galta Business Angels. Uh, I work with entrepreneurs and investors. Uh, I have been working here for like three years now. Uh, and Galta Business Angels is a premier angel network in Istanbul. Uh, it has 25 members. Uh, and they are very well-known uh, investors in Turkey, and we have established in 2011. And we have made 11 uh, uh, investments. Uh, we have invested in 11 startups, and six of them received their second funding after GBA investment. And we are looking for investments in Turkey and in Europe as well. And today we have three panelists, uh, Meli from Yemek Sepeti, uh, Ihsan from Fit Startup Company uh, and Joachim Behan from BIC Angel Investment. Uh, I would like each of them to introduce themselves to you all. Uh, first, Melih, could you please introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, everybody. My name is Melih Ödemiş. I'm one of the founders of Yemeksepeti.com, which is an online food delivery business that we have started in 2000, 14 years ago, actually. Uh, besides my hat on as a CTO and founder at Yemeksepeti, I've been investing in many uh, startups in high-tech in the internet businesses since four years. I'm one of the founding members of Galata Business Angels. Um, now I have left my hat as CTO at Yemeksepeti. I'm still one of the shareholders. I'll talk about Yemeksepeti uh, in the second round, what to do, how it went, etc. Um, and now we are with my colleagues, friends from Istanbul, talking about Istanbul. Thank you. Uh, this is Isan. Uh, I'm a founding director of the Fit Startup Factory, which is the first accelerator program in Turkey. Uh, we have launched 24 startups last three years. Also, I am an ex-entrepreneur, I can say. I have a start business in Istanbul, which is controlling irrigation system in the agriculture, then sold in California. Now I'm uh, running this program. Also, I'm working for the university, helping to the students be an entrepreneur. I'm a director center for entrepreneurship. Thank you. Anyway. Yes, my name is Joachim Behrendt. Uh, I don't look that much Turkish. Actually, I'm German. <laughs> I moved to Turkey more than 10 years ago, actually 15 years ago. Uh, I'm teaching at university. I was teaching before accounting finance. Now I'm teaching entrepreneurship. Uh, I was an entrepreneur a long, long time ago. When I came to Turkey, I set up another company, an internet business, uh, which is still working. But uh, in the later stage, like Meili, I stepped out. So I was not... Uh, I, I, gave up being the CEO. I still continue as a chairman. Then I started uh, with Galata Business Angels to invest as an angel investor. Uh, it looked very attractive, and uh, I founded my own angel network environment, which now became another accredited network with around 40 investors. I started uh, last year only. So last year, we made uh, three, four investments. Now we started with a network. We made the first two investments already. Thank you, Joachim. Yeah, uh, first, I would like to start with Isan. Okay. Uh, Isan, could you please explain to us about the general environment of entrepreneurship? And could you please give us some examples of success stories in Turkey? Okay, uh, about the ecosystem in Turkey, about the entrepreneurial ecosystem. Actually, if you ask this question seven years ago to me, I can say there is no ecosystem, there is nobody, just few entrepreneurs, that's it. But last six years, everything has changed in Turkey because of the base on the economic improvement. Uh, you know that last three years we have the almost the best three uh, growth rapid in the world in the quarterly. So after this, the, our government decided to focus on the entrepreneurship very, very strongly. And we have lots of grant programs, the Silicon Valley Tours, which is organized by the government. And uh, in, maybe you don't know, the, I will uh, mention about the population of the Turkey, 75 million population Turkey has, and 50% of this population is under 35 years old. So we are, we, our internet penetration is almost 40%, credit card penetration is almost 100%, mobile phone penetration is more than 100% in Turkey. So we have an early adapter country, which is the fourth biggest force car population in the world, the fifth biggest Facebook, 
I'm not sure the sixth biggest Twitter population. So, and at the same time, Turkey is the most uh, engaged with the internet. We are consuming 17 or 18 hours per week in the YouTube. So, <coughs> that's our population. But the, our co uh, country has a specific advantage, and we understand that it's a good for the entrepreneurship because we are so easy to go to the Europe and we are so easy to go to the uh, Middle East that the US company started to invest startups in Turkey then people aware that we have a, some uh, you know the advantage uh, in the ecosystem side government is working very well the NGO side we don't very strong in the NGO side we have some NGOs but they focus on the most of the growth stage entrepreneurs or startups. So we don't have any organizations for the early stage uh, startups in Turkey. The, uh, the net investment side, I'm not going to talk about, maybe he can talk about, but uh, Turkey has a strong private equity. We don't have any strong VC. That's why all European VCs in Turkey, not Turkish VCs. We have just two Turkish VCs running very well right now, but the other one is the early bird, hummingbird, 3TS. These are the European investments. Uh, VCs. Angel network side, we have uh, approximately more than a thousand angel investors in Turkey, but they are not very active. Okay. If you talk about the active investors, angel investors, we can just count 50, 60 per people. So <clears throat> the other side, the university side in Turkey, we have a really strong pressure on the universities. You should create entrepreneurs. Uh, in our culture, it's not very well, you know, uh, people don't respect the entrepreneurs. Be people usually want to be a professional with the big companies like Intel, uh, Google, whatever it is. So right now, the government changed the politics and all universities should have the technology transfer offices, incubation programs, accelerator programs, uh, entrepreneurship BA programs, uh, master programs about entrepreneurship. So the universities right now, we have the good talents about engineers, but they're not entrepreneurial talents. Now it's changing again. So. <clears throat> What the other size, the, the private sector, private sector in Turkey, the telecom companies and the banking companies had started to work with the startups. Two years ago, they never accept to do some meeting with the startups. Right now, they are focusing on the startups in, about innovation very, very strongly. So we are running lots of programs about the vertical programs with them. So just some of that, I can give the, maybe everybody knows about the Global Entrepreneurship Monitor, which is the most powerful uh, research about entrepreneurship. Turkey has an early stage entrepreneurial activity percentage is 6% in Turkey six years ago. Right now it's 14%. So it shows that entrepreneurship is getting really, really hot topic. In the old magazines, newspapers, they start talk entrepreneurship, startups and everything. So our environment looks good. Thank you. And Milihan Yohim, this is a question for you both. As an angel investor, what do you think about the quality of startups in Turkey? He has more experience, maybe Mili should start <laughs> with it. So, actually, I mean, <coughs> I'm, I'm in the entrepreneurial ecosystem before it was an ecosystem, actually. Mm. I, I, mm. I, we started our business in 2000. So as Ihsan said, in 2000, we couldn't even talk about entrepreneurship or entrepreneurs in Turkey. We could, of course, but not in internet because the, the arrival of broadband internet in Turkey, it was 2004, 2005. So all the startups started before 2004 and 2005. We struggled for long four or five years without broadband internet. But after the coming arrival of broadband internet in 2004, 5, everything changed in a, in a fast pace. And especially after 2008, uh, when Turkish, uh, let's say, economical stability went on, uh, we had a very good um, momentum on growth, on entrepreneurial ecosystem. So that's why until seven, six years ago, the quality of overall, overall quality of entrepreneurs, entrepreneurship was bad. It was because when we talk about entrepreneurship, we want to talk about entrepreneurs at will. I mean, they, are, they have chosen to be entrepreneurs, not entrepreneurship because of necessity. Because uh, before, let's say, 10 years ago, we could only talk about entrepreneurship out of necessity. But now, since there is a much bigger uh, ecosystem, there is much bigger opportunity, there's growth, investment. there are success stories, there, has, there is investment, there is a hype around entrepreneurship, and it's unlike 10 years ago, it's more celebrated. It's more celebrated to be an entrepreneur, it's more celebrated on, on, the, on the family side, on, in the street, in the schools. So now it's more popular, so that's why there's a hype. So that brings more and more quality <coughs> entrepreneurs towards being 
being entrepreneurs and taking risks and not going to international companies or going to family businesses, etc. <coughs> That's why in the last two, three years, I think the quality, overall quality of entrepreneurs and teams is mm -hmm. going better and better. But are we there yet? No, I think we still have a huge way to go to be there. That's my vision on Thank that. You. I mean, actually, maybe adding something, I have a mixed role because I'm living in the country, but I still can't uh, give up thinking German in some parts. I'm comparing, I'm active in Germany as well. I'm acting as a consultant in Germany. So when I compare the ecosystem and I compare the environment, it's very different. I mean, Turkish startups, the entrepreneurs, they're very enthusiastic. They're very committed. They're they, they easy to, let's say, to, to uh, put all their efforts, all their energy, everything they have, they really would like to achieve something. So that's great. And there's a big shift, I, I can just confirm, in the cultural perception. I mean, for example, in my lecture, two years ago I started lecturing, there were 15 people. Now I had uh, more than 100 applications and uh, I, I just could accept 50 of them. So nowadays it becomes more something very positive. A couple of years ago, if you introduced your boyfriend, let's say, and said, okay, he's an entrepreneur, the, the mother started crying, <laughs> and now she's enthusiastic and happy, oh, great, he's an entrepreneur. In fact, it's a little bit of a hype. It's not something which is so well-founded because uh, it's not, we don't have so many exits. I mean, Meili with the MXAPET, he has one of the few success stories, but it took more than 10 years until this exit was reached. Long, long time to go. So. We have good startups, they're enthusiastic, the ecosystem is developing, the country itself, let's say, the, it's a developing country, so there's a lot of opportunities to do something. What is missing sometimes, the average age is much lower than what we see in other countries, states, Europe, the experience is not there, the knowledge is not there, so they need much more mentorship, much more coaching, much more guidance, and they need to stick to, let's say, a certain strategy and guideline, which is sometimes hard. If they achieve it, so if you put these elements together with this enthusiasm and this knowledge, it's great. So I believe the startups are good, and actually, I'm not investing in Germany, I'm investing in Turkey for, for good reasons. Okay, thank you. And some, so what are the main challenges for entrepreneurs in Turkey? Uh, main challenges? <coughs> actually, as I mentioned, the population and the uh, early adaptation, all entrepreneurs in Turkey usually focus on the just local because they see, oh, Turkish market is a really big market, I don't need anything else, so they just think, you know, locally, so they never be global or regional startups. This is the, in Turkey is a good, uh, I, I can say that Turkey is a really bad, you know, it's good for the testing, okay? Mm -hmm. But people always think it's very uh, locally. The second problem is about Turkish people, we don't patient guys, so we usually looking for short-term stuff, so that's why we usually focus on the, uh, copycats and some things were successful in the US, we launched it and we sold it to the company Groupon, other, other companies. So short-term focus is a big challenge. And the second challenge, we don't have really successful exits in Turkey very much. Okay, we have the Meili, the Yemek Sepeti, they raised more than $40 million for just minority shares. So it's a really good one. Also, we have the Gitti Gidior, which is sold four years ago, almost $300 million to do eBay. Or we have the Marcafoni, it's $200 million going to sell to the, the Napster. Naspers. Yeah, Naspers. So we have some examples, of course, but it's not more than 10. So the, we, if we couldn't see the you know, exit potential, angel investors and the VCs more, uh, I can say, conservative because they can't see the, the exit. So they don't want to invest very, very much. They don't take the risks, very strong the risks. And the, the prototype or the seed fund stage, we have the problem in Turkey. If you don't take the government's grant, you can't find the money very, very easily. You can find money if you have a customer, but if you don't have any customer and you are trying to do something R&D based, which is really innovation, you can't find the seed fund. It's not easy, very easy. So the last thing is the uh, challenges for us, the mentoring. I believe that the mentoring is the most powerful, you know, uh, source for the entrepreneurship. But in Turkey, we are in the early stage of the entrepreneurial curve, so we don't have lots of serial entrepreneurs, so it means we don't have enough mentors for the startups. So this is the really big problem, actually. So the mentoring, seed funds, and the exit potential is the, and the thinking local is the, our challenges right now. 
Melih, as an entrepreneur and as an angel investment, could you please explain us what MXFT is and what was the biggest challenge for you at MXFT? Because it was like 10 years ago and there weren't any enough investment in Turkey. So how did you get fund? Could you please sure. explain? Yemeksebit is an online food delivery company, which is if you are hungry and just you just, you just want to order food, instead of uh, picking up the phone and calling the pizza company or sushi company, you just go to our website, uh, search for uh, search for restaurants in your neighborhood, and you choose one of them, and you fill on fill in your basket, and you submit your order, and you, we submit your order to the restaurant. We don't take care of the logistics. We don't take, take care of the payment and anything. We just submit the order to the restaurant and the restaurant prepares the food and takes it to you and collects the money and we collect our commission at the end of the day, at the end of the month. So this, this model, we came up with this model in uh, 14 years ago, in 2000, when there was even no broadband internet in Turkey. It was just mainly companies online and I mean the, the houses were online only with dial-up phones. So that, that was the biggest challenge actually for us because it was too early. But there was this, this discussion in the early morning that, I mean, what is too early? Uh, would you prefer to follow trends or would you prefer to be there before there is a clear market or clear, 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 clear opportunity? We took the hard way and we started even before there is, there is a proper market for both for food delivery and both for internet. We were young, we were enthusiastic, as Joachim said. And we were 24. So we were three partners starting in 2000. For um, eight years, we didn't take any kind of funding. We, didn't, uh, we had all the challenges that Ihsan mentioned because there, there was no seed fund, there was no mentor, there was no infrastructure, etc. So that's, what, that's why for four or five years, until we even came, became break even any, anything and cash flow positive, everything, when we first took our first funds in 2008, it was uh, the German group, European Founders Fund, the famous uh, Summer Brothers. They invested in us for 20%, which was mostly a cash out for the, for the founders, actually. It, 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 it wasn't a typical investment. And after that, uh, after four years, last year, we took another round of investment, and which, which was like for more, more for global growth of GameXPT, mm -hmm. which also uh, was a... Um, sign of, a, let's say, a follow-up investment of many mm -hmm. uh, similar companies in the same area, because mm -hmm. as you may, might have followed, uh, Seamless and GrabHub have merged in US doing the same, and then they went public this year. Just Eat in Europe, they went public this year. So our kind of industry is very hot, actually, in the uh, recent three years, three, four years, mm -hmm. and our investment was also one part of the the, the, the hot, I mean, getting warm uh, industry. For us, all the challenges was, you, get, you, you have different challenges, we had different challenges on different stages, but besides having, not having the un ecosystem, um, after, after a certain point, um, going global is, for example, uh, as Isan said, we thought, for example, Turkey would be big enough for us for several years, but after, after a, a point, we noticed that we have huge room to go. I mean, take, take it regional, take it global. Mm -hmm. That's why now we have operations in Middle East in several countries. We have operations in Greece, and we are looking further as well in other countries. Besides that, uh, we also do, did some vertical new investments and projects, businesses in Turkey, again, related to food. Uh, so we are trying to not come up with businesses that let, let's say copycat businesses from Europe or US and do the same in Turkey, but we are trying to leverage our own strength in Turkey and come up with new businesses, innovative businesses mm -hmm. in Turkey, and also then maybe copycat our, ourselves in other markets. Market. That's what we do. What we do. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And Joachim, as an angel investor, mm -hmm. uh, which sectors are you willing to invest? Mm -hmm. I mean, the model, just uh, maybe what you described, is very much kind of a roadmap. <clears throat> Not that we took it from you, but it's a, it's a well-proven system in Turkey. I mean, I would say there are two tracks how we are investing. One of them is we are saying, okay, the, our back 
bone, let's say, is something we gained experience with our digital agency. We know about IT. So we are actually investing into everything which is related to internet, social media, mobile, uh, mobile commerce, uh, social commerce, software as a service, everything in this area, simply because we, we know about it. But this is a global business. It's not any longer that you can do something local. E-commerce maybe is a little bit different, but in other areas, software as a service, it doesn't matter if you're located in Turkey or wherever. Actually, Turkey is a very nice launch pad for doing something which can grow globally. I mean, first, you have the market side. You have 75 million people, young people, very internet affine, testing new business models. So you can really try something. And what you, the experience you're gaining, you can, in a lot of areas, you can multiply. You can scale it uh, and expand to, let's say, other areas of the, of the world. Same time, you have better access. It's much easier to organize things like getting good, we have very, very good education, for example, in IT. We have very good computer engineers. We have, uh, in general, good education. That means we can easily put together the resources we need to test something. And to be honest, it's still cheaper and more easy to do that in Turkey if I compare it at least to Germany and to, to some other countries. Less bureaucratic, cheaper, so it's a nice test market for growing. So this is one path, internet, uh, everything around that, and then starting in Turkey, but expanding or planning to go to other countries. The second part came with our co-investors. I mean, actually, if you think about Turkey as a developing country, there's a lot of areas where some new businesses could drive. But uh, the question is, if you don't understand about how to do that, how can you go into that? Plus, the investment needs are higher. So let's talk about, for example, agricultural sector, organic food, organic cosmetics, stuff like that travel industry, there is much more in Turkey. So now we start to invest into that area, provided we have a lead investor who knows the sector and who can actually mentor and coach the startup. Without this knowledge, it's too dangerous, especially in Turkey. So as an angel investor, uh, what are the key elements that you seek before investing? What are you looking uh, for? I think when I started, uh, which is now two years ago, I had a long list which was mainly driven by theoretical literature. What did you look for? What do you need to look for when you have a startup? The list started to shrink, and now it's maybe down to one main factor. But let me first mention the four main factors we are still looking for. So the first thing is uh, innovative content. So someone comes with an idea, and we would like to understand, is this an idea which has some innovative content. It doesn't mean it's a revolution. It can e even be a copycat. Innovation means even for the public, let's say for the people I'm addressing, for my, for my target market, it should be something new which they don't have before. So it can even be regional innovation. So that is one part, the business idea. Immediately after that comes how can I monetize it? So what is in it in terms of financing? Having a new marketplace, which needs first to have a couple of uh, 10 or 100,000 users before I can get advertising income is not attractive. What is attractive is uh, if I have something scalable with a high gross margin, which I can actually convert into, where I can help as an angel investor convert them from a startup into a corporation. So this is a second factor. Third one, of course, market. How big is the market? How deep is the market? What is the competition? How long can I have a sustainable competitive advantage? So the market part is the, the third one. And last not least, as angel investors, can we add value? Can we do something that if we enter that, except of putting the money in it, is it something where we can help them developing, reaching the next stage? And then comes the most important one, which is mainly the, the, the main and only factor which I really would look on, which is how is the team, how are the founders? I mean, the more you speak to experienced investors, I think you, some of you, you know it much better than me, uh, you realize in the end, if they are good, they can do everything. If the market is not, not that good, they change something, they pivot. Same goes for the business model. Same goes for the, how they produce the, the, the service they're doing. So in the end, the most important resource is actually the founders, the founding team, the other parts are relevant for the selection process, but in the end, this is the factor who decides about investing or not investing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And Miri, as an angel investor, same question for you. What sure. are the key elements? I mean, besides, and uh, Joachim told, of course, I mean, we look, I never had the list first to start. <laughs> uh, I kind of uh, try to follow my instincts, first of all. Yeah. 
um, I try to see the enthusi enthusiasm and passion in the eyes of the founders, uh, entrepreneurs. Um, I want them to be ready to, to, to understand and be on the way of the, of the, of the risk taking. It's a long journey. I mean, entrepreneurship is not, not a short and easy task and like, it's not like the success stories or like that we read every day on TechCrunch because we always read the success stories, but there is thousands of companies, failure stories, I mean, lots of, lots of um, efforts going to nowhere. So that's why an entrepreneur, start being an entrepreneur, or let's say being willing to become an entrepreneur and pitching your idea is only the beginning of it. And it will never be an easy and short journey. And when I talk to entrepreneurs, I want to see that kind of uh, patience in them. And also, I mostly try to pick entrepreneurs who, are, who have a good story behind their why are they entrepreneurs and why they are doing that business model. I mean, there should be a relevant story behind that. It's, it, it shouldn't be like, I wanted to be an entrepreneur and e-commerce is very popular, that's why I became an e-commerce entrepreneur and I have two very good teammates from Harvard, etc., and we came up together and we'll be a perfect team. No, it's not like, like that. I mean, the team, the, the team should be established uh, considering a very good collaboration. They should complete each other and become a good team. Uh, they should fight. They should not, not uh, avoid fighting. You should, you should see that kind of strong personalities in that. But um, so there should be an innovative idea with a relevant story and patient enough entrepreneurs to take uh, very big risks for a long marathon. So you had a long journey in Yemeksepeti and you have got funded like after eight years. And are there enough capital in investment in Turkey now? What do you think? Do entrepreneurs face the same difficulties like you before? Not, I can't say that. I mean, um, there is more and more capital, I think, in Turkey. Capital is not uh, the problem. I don't think capital is the problem, but the... the um, matching of capital and investors with entrepreneurs or teams is kind of a problem because there is a problem of level mismatch because there is there, we, we need more seed capital but there is less seed capital so as Ihsan said there is a huge private equity in industry this is the, the, um, the scale of dot-com companies the scale of internet companies is not there yet for private equity companies or let's say only a few dot com companies are on the scale of private equity companies. Whereas on the VC level, like um, where the ticket, ticket, average ticket is like around 2 million, 3 million, mm -hmm. we only have a few VCs, as Ihsan said. <coughs> but now more and more VCs are coming up. Uh, on the business angel investment side, we have more and more angel investment groups, per individuals, etc., coming up and investing. We see lots of um, old business, old, old sector, old industry people that have made their own wealth from those industries and now investing in high tech or internet, which is something good. We have some good examples for that. Mm -hmm. So I, th I don't think that capital is a, a big problem in Turkey now, but more like the problems are around more exit, like more second or third round of investments, <coughs> matching the needs of entrepreneurs on different stages with different uh, types of investment institutions, let's say. So we need, we need more seed capital, we need more second, third round of uh, investments. Mm -hmm. And we also have some problems around talent actually also, because I mean, in, in the, in the, in the um, presentations of one of the pitches that we had from Brazil, that they had the list of that talent war uh, Brazil was, I, I guess, number one or two, and Turkey was next after. I didn't know it, but I just uh, saw it. But I live with the entrepreneurs that, that because the entrepreneurial ecosystem is new, and they are trying to hunt talent from real businesses, which a lot more buying power, I mean, and, and everything else. So that's why uh, they are trying to come up with innovative ideas around hunting talent. So 
what are the challenges faced by investors? I mean, for both local and foreign investors. Do they want to invest in Turkey? Do they have any challenges? For foreign, foreign investment houses, let's say, I mean, we always uh, recommend them to, and that, that's, that's also the, the case for many uh, developing countries, because each developing country, especially with, with some, um, let's say, ethnic uh, specialties, like Turkey, because, for example, Turkish is a language is a barrier, and I mean, it's always good to work with a local investment house or local investment group for foreign companies, we recommend that. But for locals, let's say we know the ecosystem, we, we, we try to know the entrepreneurs, the background of them, uh, but the biggest problem for, for investors, like angel investors, I would say that is the um, lack of support systems around, um, around the deal making and deal follow up. Let's say pre-deal and post-deal <coughs> uh, structures are not there yet. We don't have uh, we have lots of law companies, law, law firms, but we don't have enough law firms concentrated on small deals. Mm. So that's why they are too expensive or they are not experienced enough in that kind of <coughs> deals because we want to close the deal in a few weeks, whereas they, 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 are, uh, um, they close the deals with big companies in months. Mm. So we have to speed up the, the, mm. the process. Mm. Whereas mm. if you, do the, pro if you do, do the deal after the deal, um, we, we lack some kind of financial control. We, we, we lack, to, to, up, to, uh, to up to a certain extent, the, the financial discipline uh, on the investors, mm. on the entrepreneurs. So that's, that's kind of, that, that requires more, <laughs> more hand-holding from the side of the investors. So it should be, you, I mean, when we talk with mm. angel investors from US, we see that they are able to invest a lot more in quantities that we are mm. able to because they have a, lo a lot more uh, grown up <coughs> ecosystem and that helps them to mm. invest a lot more. Mm. And that's where we are trying to build up. Mm. And that's, that's makes, that, that makes our job a little bit more difficult. Maybe Joachim and yeah. Isan yeah. have lots of few just things. I just so. wanted to add one note because that is something I experience as well. Okay, I'm biased because my background is accounting and finance, but uh, my finance manager, she was before she was Price Waterhouse manager, mergers acquisitions. She told me even bigger companies are not easy to sell in Turkey. So normally it comes to an asset deal because people don't believe in the figures which are presented. Partly there is uh, in, in the old history of Turkey there was something like grey economy. So some figures were simply not represented in accounting. But the main part was simply kind of a disrespect for managing by numbers. Same goes for the legal framework. There is a legal framework, yes, but it's not so important, or it's not considered to be so important. So what we do with our startups, we actually force them to work with our lawyers, which are very experienced mergers acquisitions lawyers, focusing on VC funds and uh, angel investors, so they become the lawyers, both of us and of the startups, and we force them to do the accounting and reporting with us. So otherwise, uh, we consider it to be very difficult for an international investor to go in. We cannot have an exit that easily. That's, that's the background. Sorry for the... No, I just want to say one sentence. Mm -hmm. Last three years, I dealt with the almost 1,000 entrepreneurs. So usually I saw the same thing, problems, when I'm talking with the GBA or the other angel networks. When they invest in companies, the startups, they don't think they are going to do a kit care. In Turkey, they should do the kit care. You know, the, they are talented, but they are not entrepreneurs. Most they are good engineers, so they can't deal, they can't uh, motivate their self by themselves, you know. So you usually help them, you usually talk to them, you should spend time with them. So in Turkey, okay, we started to invest the companies as an angel investor doing the co-investments, but nobody take care of to the startup. So this is the biggest problem. So they are coming to the company, uh, the, our incubation program or the other accelerators to help us to monitor the startups, but it's not working like that. So we are in the early stage, but we have the potential. Yeah. Turkey, you know, does the government mm. uh, provide incentives for local and foreign investors? Okay, so I'm not, uh, my Turkish is limited, and my <laughs> knowledge about the policies of the government is limited as well, but if I compare that to what I see in other countries, it's very ambitious. Like Isan said already, I mean, even at university level, you are pressed to offer something for entrepreneurs. So they want to have 
let's say, investments in research and development. The government wants to see innovation coming up. There are actually generous funds. If you have an idea, it's not so difficult to get funding up to 200,000 uh, euro, for example. Uh, there are some institutions doing this in Turkey. For example, software industry, a lot, lot of universities, they're having so-called technocans. In technocant, if you work there as a software engineer, you don't pay any income taxes. The company employing you, they don't pay corporate uh, income tax, and half of the social security is cancelled as well. So this is already something. Coming to the angel investor side, so they're going through all the ecosystem. So angel investor side, there was a new law last year. So you need to be licensed, but it's actually not that uh, impossible. So if you, if you have a license, if you're granted a license, then you can deduct 75% of your investment from your own tax base, which means if you just invest a little bit more than what you have uh, earned, you're, getting, you're, you're not paying any taxes at all. And if you keep the shares, let's say, in the company for at least two years, again, no taxes. And now there's a similar initiative about funds. Yeah. There's a fund of funds, so they are going through that. So the initiatives, let's say, the, the engagement of the government is very high. The execution, they need to learn on that. It's, it's, it's a new sector, so even they are learning, but they're willing to learn, so they're exchanging ideas with the angel networks, with the VC funds. So I think the incentives are very generous. I think they're one of the most generous ones in the world at the moment. Mm -hmm. So, Melich, as an angel investor, what do you think about the new tax incentive? New tax incentive? Yeah, as, as Joachim told, I mean, um, I invested a lot earlier than that, I think. Is, is it my oh, point? Okay. Yeah. I started investing like maybe around four years ago uh, and I don't invest because of any kind of tax incentives or anything. I mean, I would invest even if there is no, no kind of incentives or I mean tax uh, benefits. But of course, for all the newcomers, for all the like all businessmen with like uh, good wealth uh, and to motivate people more around uh, angel investment, it's a perfect uh, benefit and incentive. So it will pull, let's say, more and more people from just uh, doing idle investments like normal, normal, like taking interest rates or investing in the, in the, in the exchange, uh, big exchanges, etc. But not and takes, but instead take some more risks and put their their money into private companies, small private companies, and uh, that, that, will, that will boost, enhance the entrepreneurial ecosystem. I think that's, that's mm. I, uh, as Joachim said, I mean, the government is doing a lot to motivate uh, any kind of investments, but they are learning, as he said. Mm. I mean, yeah. the execution, yeah. we'll see better and better execution with time. Mm -hmm. Sam, would you like to add something about the tax incentive? Because yeah, we are the tax incentive is not very good for the normal people. You know, in the world, in the U.S., I raised money in the U.S., you know, different nine angel investors, mm -hmm. more than two million, but uh, all of them is the, most of them actually the high-level professionals. In Turkey, if you are a high-level professional making really good money, C-level professional, you can use this tax incentive because it depends on your mm -hmm. assets, not about your, how much money you have. So it's not very good working. And the, the other point you mentioned that the government policy, there is a one problem. They are spending lots of money, but the judge of the group who is deciding we can give this grant, this startup or this startup, all of them are the academics, professors. They say, oh, I like this company. I like this guy. And they give the 300,000 euros to the, uh, the projects. They never focus on the commercialization part. They never focus on the, is there, is there any market or not? So that's the biggest problem of the government doing. So <coughs> the, what else do you ask? Did the investment yeah. point, it's... No. Yes, I don't have any question for ah. you. I have just one question for you, him, And then I think we are getting out of time. Uh, what do you think about the recent developments in Turkey? Because you know, there's yeah. blockage of Twitter and yeah. YouTube. It and probably, will uh, this affect the investment uh, in Turkey? I mean, actually, my investors are asking the same. The thing is, uh, if you think about Warren Buffett, he is always getting very enthusiastic if things look very bad. Actually, I would consider the same for Turkey. I mean, if you're investing into something, it takes years. I'm living in Turkey now for 15 years. I have gone through two, three, four crises, a semi-military putsch and whatever, and always Turkey 
came out of that, it'll continue. It, 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 it is very much depending on the people in Turkey, so they go through that, their experience with crisis. Things look very dramatical in, uh, in, the, in the outside world, but it's not as dramatic as it seems. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, we believe very much that it will continue. It is disturbing, it's distracting. I, f I personally feel distracted by that, but it would not prevent me from investing. Rather, the opposite, I think it's a good time to invest in a in country like Turkey. And uh, thank you for participating and sharing your valuable insight with us. And we are out of time, but if you have questions, mm -hmm. we can take just one or two. Okay, great, you don't have. Thank you. Thank you for being thank here. You